So if we think about pathophysiology, as we mentioned, these nerves are traveling through anatomic spaces. Over time, there can be um, some wear and tear, other, other issues where there's ultimately compression. This compression in turn can lead to ischemia and that can lead to edema. So if we take a look at, a, at an ultrasound, this is looking at the median nerve in a longitudinal view. Um, proximal is towards the um, right side of the picture here. The FR here refers to the flexor retinaculum, which is um, a connective tissue band that basically forms the roof of the carpal tunnel and is what we open up during surgery to decompress the nerve. You could see that if we look just upstream or proximal, you can see a dilation of the nerve between these two um, markers and then a more thinning of the nerve or normal diameter distally. Basically, you could think of this almost like a roadblock block where there's traffic, uh, traffic jam and traffic is building up upstream. So this um, relates, just visually uh, can relate to some of these findings here of compression leading to ultimately edema or swelling of the nerve. So this is indicative of an entrapment here. Um, other data that can be useful, um, we can look at some electrical studies where in this, uh, this is a picture of the lower extremity. Here's the fibular head, uh, a very common site of entrapment in the lower extremity of the common peroneal nerve. When doing um, nerve conduction studies or electrical studies, we can look at the speed um, that electricity travels along these wires above and below the presumed site of entrapment and look for differences with the idea that there may be demyelination or some loss of the insulation around the wire at the level of the entrapment such that um, the electrical signals will travel much slower. Okay, so I thought this was a nice um, pictorial representation of some of the different um, multifaceted types of um, factors at play with entrapment neuropathies. So we talked about ischemia, we discussed edema. This can lead to fibrosis. We talked about focal demyelination at a site of entrapment. Ultimately, there can be axon degeneration, atrophy noted on exam, and then other factors, neuroinflammation. We discussed um, kind of the traffic jam where at an entrapment site, different axonal um, proteins are being transported, but, but basically get stuck and build up. And then other um, overlapping issues such as um, spinal cord uh, or foraminal compression. So these all play a role. And then you can see in the background here, there's other factors. So there's occupational factors. Um, some patients that I've had in the past, um, a chef for instance, who spent all day supinating and pronating his wrist may have a predisposition to entrapping, let's say the median nerve more proximally. Um, we think about systemic diseases, diabetes, hypothyroidism, we think about um, also genetic causes. So I've listed some here, Charcot-Marie tooth and hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure palsies. So again, the pathophysiology is, is complex, it's multifaceted. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.